high. Praise God. <clears throat> well, here's another topic that doesn't sound like I'm being very encouraging to people. But uh, <clears throat> I think sometimes when you encourage people and you don't want to deal with their sin, then you're just uh, hardening them in, into their way of life. And until, they say sin, until they see sin and the way God sees sin and how he deals with it and how serious it is to, uh, to him, and if it's not serious to them, then why would they want to deal with it? And so today's subject is, you will not enter the kingdom of God. And so, uh, um, Father God, thank you for this time, and I pray that your Holy Spirit will guide me and direct me, and I pray that this will encourage somebody to get rid of their sin and to stop sinning and to walk with you and honor you and love you. Uh, again, I've shared it before, Lord, that uh, your word says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And many teachings of today's church uh, reject that. And they just say, you just got to love and believe. So, Father, help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> again, I just got a bunch of verses, so you can write some of these down. Uh, some of these here, uh, I got a lot to say on other things. I don't have a lot to say on this. It's pretty self-explanatory. But if you look up the kingdom of God and you kind of do research, uh, and of course this is pretty much all the New Testament stuff, uh, I got another teaching that I'm working on um, with uh, uh, the Word of God. The Word of God. One night it dawned on me, the Word of God. Paul talked to, uh, he was at Corinth for a year and a half teaching the Word of God. There was no New Testament written at that time. He's teaching the Gospel according to the Old Testament and he's people are getting converted and saved and walking with God and so uh, uh, a lot, anyway so let's look at this Matthew 7 21 Matthew 7 chapter 7 21 not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of God or of heaven that word I found uh, has been used uh, it, uh, intermixed the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God uh, it kind of just depends on how uh, how he was writing it, I guess. They seem to be interchangeable. That's the word I'm looking for. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. The thing, too, a lot of these verses, as you're studying this and reading through this, is, again, I have a hard time. How do they come up with once saved, always saved? When it's continuously warning people throughout of, of areas of their lives and stuff that if they don't deal with it, they're out. God's going to cut them off. Matthew 18, verse 3. Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And I guess they're looking at it as an attitude, as a, a, a child humbles itself before their father and uh, respects them and, and stuff. Think about the characteristics of a child. I guess the good and the bad. Matthew 19, 23, Truly I say to you, <clears throat> only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. And it's back to your securities. What, what are you holding on to? What are you in control of? Uh, do you want to give up stuff in order to follow God? John 3, verse 3, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God. To me, that's so important. The whole watered-down gospel is saying some kind of a little sinner's prayer and then baptizing people and, not, and leading them off, having them go off thinking they're saved when you haven't spent time cultivating and working with them. How do you know they're saved? Are you going to put false hope in them? Yeah, there are people that get saved right away. But is the church responsible to help deal with that? Some people say that, oh, no, no, it's all up to God. If we're not sharing the truth right and properly according to God's word, we make it null and void. So then all they are is going through the motions of becoming churchy. you got a whole bunch of churchy people out there. It's better for them never to have known than to have known and walked away. John 3, 5. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's an interesting one because I've looked that up several different times and heard different teachings on it. It says, born of water, angels, the fallen angels cannot be born again. Born of water is your mother's water breaks. 
Some people say born of water is uh, after you've been baptized. But the context and stuff, it, it's just, I, I, this, this is one that I'm still working on, so it's kind of up in the air with me. Acts 14, 22. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith. Right there. What, why do you need to encourage them in the faith if, if they got once saved, always saved? And saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. We're going to go through a lot of tribulation. We're going to go through a lot of hard times. And many will leave the faith. Oh, well, they were never really saved. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's not, not, that's not what you told them when they got converted. <clears throat> you told them just simply believe on Jesus and you'll be saved. Yeah, okay. Hebrews 3, 7 through 12. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, if today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the day of rebellion, on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Put me through the test. They tested his patience. Yes, they saw his works for 40 years, but they didn't have to see it be taken care of. They could have obeyed and, and got a better result. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts. They, not, they have not known my ways as I swear in my wrath. They shall not enter my rest. Somebody said, oh, you can't make God mad. Well, the Old Testament is full of places where God got mad and dealt with people. Hebrews 3, 18 and 19. And to whom did he swear that they should not enter his rest? But to those who were disobedient. So we see, this is the key, so we see that they were unable to enter his rest because of unbelief. They were disobedient and they didn't believe. If they believed, if you truly believe, you'd be obedient. People say to me, oh, I believe in God, but I don't have to deal with all these sins. We can't keep all the laws. We can't do all this stuff. The disobedient unbelief will not make it in the kingdom of God. That's just to me clear. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous. Huh. Do not be deceived. Neither will sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor uh, adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor right, rival revelers, nor swindlers will enter the kingdom of God. Wow, but all these guys had their sins pre-forgiven when they got saved. But if you're practicing this, it says you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. It's a warning. It's a warning. The church is lying to people so much that so many people are going to be deceived. Hebrews 13, 4, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. You're going to be judged. It doesn't mean you're going to lose some awards. It means you're going to be judged and kicked out. James 4, 4, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity against, with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. How many pastors, teachers, and people that they call themselves Christians are trying to compromise to make the unsaved feel good and comfortable in church? You're supposed to be a standard. You're supposed to be a light. 2 Peter 2, 14 and 15. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accuse children, forsaking the right way, forsaking the right way. They have gone astray. You can't go astray if you weren't in the right way in the first place. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Bor, who loved gain for wrongdoing, from wrongdoing. And so again, Going astray. Anytime the Bible's talking about it, how can you go astray if you weren't in the right place in the first time? And so the warning of the Bible is continuously all through the Old and New Testament is warning people about allowing sin in their lives. 
you got to stop. you got to quit. you got to be obedient. you got to believe in, in, the, in God, what He's doing. Uh, you will quench the Holy Spirit. It's, it's a serious. I want to be encouraging. I would love to be a fun, nice, happy person. But God has continuously shown me things in His Word where it's like, hey, guys, you're not reading it right. You're not studying it right. You're not caring about what God thinks. You've got to do it God's way. You've got to do what His Son wants, and you've got to do what the Holy Spirit wants. The Trinity. Amen? Amen.